Good morning guys and girls. Hi, hello. My name is EJ and I am here again with yet another art video for us to watch uh, and, you know, learn a thing or two from. So, yeah. Um, anyways, before I proceed with what's going on with the artwork and describing what's going on in the screen, let me take a moment um to say thank you for Sophie Marquez for a great photo reference that I used for this particular artwork um unfortunately I don't know what the status of this photo is um that's part of the reason why the reference image is blurred out on the left um I will have at some or at some point in time we will see the photo um because I'm going to end up tracing over it and I'll explain that in a second. But um, real quick, I just wanted to talk about, you know, Tofi Marquez and Pixels. Uh, in case you don't know what Pixels.com is, it's a very, very great reference, photo reference site for artists. Um, basically, all the photos on there you can use for free in your art projects. Um, of course, there's some rights, I think, for commercial pro commercial endeavors and whatnot, but um, acting in what I do take it back. As far as my understanding goes, everything is free, rights, issues, wise, and whatnot. Um, and so at the time when I did this particular artwork, which we could see on my screen right now on top of the window of the file I'm working on it says 2020-07-18 so at July 18 of last year when I did this particular artwork this photo of Tofi Marquez was available on pixels for us to use now when I checked it not too long ago it's not available anymore so I don't know what the status of the photo is uh, it's like one of those gray areas for rights issues and whatnot, but I do believe I'm still in the okay range given the fact that I have a proof of date of when I use this photo. And when I use this photo, it was available for at Pixel. So yeah. Anyways, I do just want to say a shout out to Sophie Marquez for a great photo. So um and again, pixels.com, do check out that site simply because they have really, really good photo references on there. And I'm just glad that for once um, we have a site that we could use for reference and a lot of them are available um, under a Creative Commons license, basically. So we don't have to worry too much about rights and whatnot. So, yeah. But yeah, now that I'm done talking about that, let's talk about the artwork. Um, so right now, um, I did a quick sketch. So the video is going to be divided into like two parts, basically. There's the part, the 30 minute speed paint part, which is what we're watching right now. It's almost over at this point in time. And then there's like the three to five hour speed paint that I did because I wanted to develop the work a little bit more. Um, so on the screen right now, basically what has transpired in the past three minutes or so was I did a quick sketch. I did a quick coloring of my sketch with a random mech brush with a hue variation in it. Then I blended them all together with my smudge textured brush. That was the part that we just saw just a second ago. Um, and then as soon as I got everything blended in, then I started the detailing process, which is what we're watching right now. My detailing process is basically I delineate my edges, meaning I make my edges sharper so the shapes read better. And I accentuate my shadows, so if the shadows need a little bit darkening, they will get a little darkening. And then I add highlights, um, which is what I'm doing. Um, on the screen right now there are extra steps and processes that i do such as the case that we're looking at right now i realized that the skin of the two people um didn't look too much like skin so i ended up doing like a color overlay on them just so that um, they have a more skin tone um and then 
I proceeded to keep the marquee selection just so that I could detail some more. Uh, so yeah, uh, that is basically what's happening right now. And after this 30 minute speed paint, I'm eventually gonna bring back the 30 minute speed paint and then draw over it to come up with my three hour speed paint. So yeah, that's really my process as of late. I do like 30 minute sketches. If I like the sketch, I proceed with like a one day session of working on it. I do a one day session of working on it. So like that's where I get the three to five hour um, speed paint from because you know, it's just one session uh where i develop the piece and then if i like it some more then hey i go the full render which takes 30 hours and it goes through weeks basically so anyways to talk about where the idea came from this idea came from daily spit paint if you've been watching my videos you know that i'm an avid member of that group uh daily spit paint posts prompts every day for you to choose from and the whole goal of the group is, you know, to speed up your decision making process. It's not so much as to speed up your artwork because really artwork needs to be done slowly. Um, it's more to speed up your decision making process, you know, because if you speed up your decision making process, it's just like where the shadow is going to be, where the light's going to be and highlights and special effects you know if you nail that down quick then all you really need to worry about would be the rendering part which is basically the detailing part you know and that part you need to slow down you know obviously when i do my 30 hour you know painting sessions um I always just try to get to just the rendering part because really that's the most fun part. It's the boring part and the tedious part, but at the same time, it's the most fun because I'm not thinking at that point. It's all just automatic go, you know, which is cool because, you know, you don't have to worry about so many things. But yeah, really, the daily speed paint, going back to that, I mean, that's what the whole point of a speed paint is, is just get things down on paper as quickly as you can, just so that, you know, you could get a great idea of what the final product is going to look like. And as we can see right now, I mean, this 30 minute version is practically done. And we can see that... Um, we can see that it's practically the same as obviously the three hour version except the three hour version is a little bit more detailed more developed obviously so yeah but yeah it's also a great exercise daily speed paint so i mentioned this practically every day when i post my videos well not every day because i don't post every day but every time i post a video so yeah and there we are. There's the photo, the great, great photo by Tofi Marquez that is not on pixels.com anymore. But at the time when I did this recording, it was. So yeah, that's what we're looking at right now. Um, now that I was, you know, content with the 30 minute speed paint, obviously I turned that in, yeah, da, 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 da. And then I'm like, hey, I really like that. Let me work with that. On, let me work on that this weekend or something. It's, I, I think that's pretty much what happened. It was like a practically like a week thing, you know, like sometime in the middle of the week I did that and I was happy with it. So like in the weekend I decided to develop it. I think that's pretty much what happened. Um, but yeah, um, so now basically what I'm doing is I'm basically tracing over the photo. Um, it helps expedite that the whole process. I mean, I could have just resketched it on my own, but what I was really more concerned about was the lighting because the photo obviously has a totally different lighting scheme than uh, the final product, which, you know what? I didn't even get to mention what the whole <laughs> idea of the painting is. Sorry. I meant to talk about it but then i got sidetracked so in daily speed paint you get prompts and the prompt for the day that i created this piece was 
uh, one of the prompts for the day that I created this piece was talisman which if I'm not wrong and you know what I should have done a Google search on exactly what a talisman is but my understanding of a talisman is like it's some form of a magical ring um, Talisman is an object, typically an inscribed ring or stone that is thought to have magic powers and to bring good luck. So that's what a talisman is, a magical ring of some sort. And so um, what I wanted to illustrate was like a photo of a ring that's glowing, which is basically what I ended up doing. Um, so... Yeah, I saw this really great photo from Pixels by Tofi Marquez, and I just really like the juxtaposition of the characters. The lighting is obviously off. It's not the same as my final product, but I knew that that's what I wanted, right? I knew that the girl was going to be wearing the ring and that the ring was going to be the big source of light um, all throughout the scene. And... So, yeah, that was really my main concern, not so much more as the character. So I was, you know, I mean, I could have done my own characters, but I was perfectly fine with just tracing over what, uh, tracing over the photo of Tofi Marquez, which is what I did. I also love their outfit. Their outfit, okay, well, the guy's outfit is very 1920s right the girl's outfit not so much like i'm not sure what the girl's outfit is it just looks like a regular shirt for the most part uh but on my sketch you could see that i decided to go for a more victorian look you know so i added more details on the sketch um I added like a bow tie and I added this shoulder uh, frou-frou, I think is like a good word for me to use. What does frou-frou mean? Now I'm curious. Uh, uh, frou-frou meaning a rustling noise made by someone walking in a dress, frills for other ornamentation, particularly of women's clothes. A little frou-frou skirt, okay. So a little shoulder frou-frou. Um, I added that in, um, and in the original photo, she's wearing long sleeves on my illustration. She's wearing, uh, she's wearing short sleeves or, well, really elbow sleeves. And then on my original 30 minute speed paint, the girl was wearing a bonnet hat and I took that out and just made the girl as is. So, yeah. So of course I made some edits and changes, but really the guy attracted me to the photo because it was very, very 1920s, you know, I was just doing a random Google search, not random Google search, random pixel search for image to use um, for my illustration. And yeah, lo and behold, I just found that. So anyways, going back to the process of what is going on. So I just got done with the sketch and now i'm quickly recoloring my original photo just so that it would match the sketch that i just now did and then as soon as i'm done with all of this i'm gonna do this much textured action thingy majiggy that i always do which basically what i do is i combine my line sketch with my base paint uh layer or or my main painting layer and just kind of smudge them all around just so that you get some good blending action thing and then as soon as all that is done um i start to proceed to paint over it so yeah but anyways when i do my um, smudge textured brush action where i blend things i make sure that i keep the shapes uh for the most part i mean everything will be blurry and fuzzy but for the most part the shapes will be very very readable um so that it's easy for me to detail on top of it but yeah that's what i'm going to be doing next and then i'm going to start the detailing process so yeah just enjoy the show that's what we're going to be watching in the next few moments
So as we can see, um, the guy is pretty much done for the most part. Um, I've added as much details as I can for a speed paint. Um, and I mean, the face obviously still needs a little bit more work on. Uh, so I haven't touched upon that yet, but for the most part, his body is all nicely rendered for the most part. I really love the wrinkles on his clothing, uh, how he get cut up in that suspenders. I thought that was very, very cool. And then clearly I'm working on the girl right now, which I remember when I was working on her, I was like super confused as to where the details of the clothing were because everything kind of looks really messy. I will have to admit that this is one of the more messier speed paints I've done because I, I did it so fast and whatnot. I was really rough with this painting. I just realized that. Um, but yeah, uh, the clothing is like really hard to read. Uh, it's kind of hard to like tell like what's going on with her outfit. But I know eventually I ended up um, fixing all of that, obviously. And it reads obviously way better now. So yeah, but currently I'm working in a face, trying to get all that fixed up. Um, and whatnot so yeah I'm just making my shapes read better I just realized I did just did that whole action thing with this smudge brush I thought that was me painting it but this is me actually smudging things around some more so yeah and then after this much texture I'm gonna go back with my chalk brush to start the details yep there's my chalk brush so yeah get a little bit more texture in and then yeah I'm just slowly detailing the guy so yeah but yes yeah, for my critique of this piece I really do do love this piece I, I love the Victorian outfit that I ended up coming up with. Obviously it was inspired by Tuffy Marcus's photo. Um, and again, like I mentioned before, his, you know, his photo, it's really wasn't very clear on whether or not that was a Victorian style outfit. The suspenders are for sure. The suspenders were really, uh, the guy's suspenders is more like a 1920s fashion, which at that point in time, that's, um, the jazz age. What is that jazz age that I'm the swinging, the swinger, not the swinger, the swing age or something? The jazz, it's jazz was really big in 1920s and swing dance was really big in the 1920s, and I do believe that that's what um, that's when suspenders were really, were really big. I don't think suspenders were very big for Victorian during the Victorian age, so. So I take back my my earlier statement. This is all Victorian inspired because even though I have Victorian in mind for the girl, the guy is definitely not Victorian. Man, I wonder what you would call that era of fashion. So yeah. Um, now I'm all just like lost in thought, wondering. But yeah, well... I do love the outfit. I do love the costumes I've come up with. Um, even if it's like an amalgam or like a mixture of outfits from different genres, from different time periods, I still love like the uh, vintage feel of it because they're both vintage. They're both from back in the day, whether it's during the jazz age outfit or if it was a Victorian age outfit, they're all from the past. So, it, you know, you kind of get this like vintage feel from the image i really love that aspect of it i really love the analogous color scheme that i ended up with because i typically do not i always love contrast for the most part so if i have warm colors i will definitely throw in some cool colors in there or if my painting is predominantly cool i will 
throw in some warm colors just to mix it all up but in this particular case it's all just warm colors it's all predominantly browns a lot of yellows some hint of oranges and reds on there so for the most part this was just a straight up analogous color scheme very cool I would have to say because I like I mentioned I don't typically do this so this was just really cool that I did that so yeah um, I don't like the rendering I think the rendering is a little rough but it does give the whole look of the painting a little bit more texture so I mean there's that obviously so yeah um, and then of course you know I now in hindsight now that I'm like watching this and like looking back at it I realized that I should have just recreated this whole scene in 3d just so that I could have a more original reference rather than having to depend on the photo um, so yeah and then I took out the highlights on her eyes because I realized it made her eyes hard to read so yeah I do have to mention I do have to say this though um, if this was a real scene lit by one ring um, her face wouldn't be lit so bright like that I mean her chest would have to be more lit in order for her face to be lit like that so yeah but I obviously wanted to draw attention to her face and not put her in the dark like I did the guys so obviously I kept that amount of light in there so yeah and then the other thing that I had issues with was her hand eventually you know after a year of me um, not doing anything with this painting and not posting it and whatnot I finally took a look at it to see if I could make a video out of it and yeah obviously I'm making a video out of it or I made a video out of it but I realized that his her hand the girl's uh, hand with the talisman ring is too small so I ended up having to make that bigger so that so that it would read clearer and then it would go um, with the whole image a lot more better a lot better so yeah but yeah for the most part this painting is pretty much done I'm just adding my final details I really thought I was done with the guy but I realized I'm wrong because I'm really really hashing out the uh the edges so yeah i mean i kind of thought that they read fuzzy but at least they read but now i'm actually just going back and just making it way way clearer so yeah and oh yeah back in the day guys used to wear the pants really high i just realized that i was really confused about how to place his waist simply because yeah back in the day the the pants has the tendency to sit higher in the waist rather than lower in the pelvic area so I didn't know if the guy's arms were were correct <laughs> like I didn't know if it was too long or not and honestly now that I'm looking at it it feels a little too long but yeah, I had issues with that at first when I was working on this. Yeah, everything else is just detailing the latest clothes, the girl's clothes. So for the most part, this is pretty much done. I really love that lighting scheme too, you know. Just that one tiny area is just super lit and then everything else is dark. Very, very chiaroscuro. So yeah, I would have to say that. But yeah, this painting called Talisman is almost complete. Just adding the final touches here and there, adding more details, adding more, delineating more edges, just that everything just reads clearer. And it's really cool that, you know, for the most part, I just use blot just to kind of just outline where everything is. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on her on the fruit fruit on her shoulders and then yeah it would be done 
I tried adding glow and I just I could not get this whole glow action thing right. Typically I would have put this in a separate layer on a color on a separate color dodge layer, but it just wasn't looking right, so I just hand painted it all in, just left it as is, so yeah. Man, her outfit is very, very cool. And I love her expression too. Expression is really nice. And I kind of call it to question whether or not her skirt would be lit like that. I kind of wonder. Hmm. And here I am doing my final inspection. Darkening some more shadows. Looking at it from afar, which is a very good tip. Always look at your paintings and illustrations from afar just to see if it reads better. Oh, I added a little highlight on the edges just so that she doesn't disappear in the dark. Totally forgot I did that. Yep, that's looking really good. Hands are too small though, still. But again, like I said, I eventually edited that in a separate session. So yeah, and that's it. This is the end of it. Thank you guys for watching that with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from it. Uh, like and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. Good night.